Inspired y'all. This is Love and Hip Hop New York. This is season eight, episode sixteen, the season finale. It's a wrap, y'all. Yay! <laughs> Cause y'all know we've been waiting for this shit to be over. Like this was the worst season of uh, Love and Hip Hop New York. Um, yeah, y'all. I mean, we still got the reunion to get through, but I'm glad that this is we're at the finish line here. But um, anyways. Let's talk about the episode. So, it starts off with the Creep Squad. <laughs> and you got Safari. Safari. <laughs> I definitely did see the picture of his penis, y'all. And, yeah, my, my, my. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Everybody was talking about his penis for, like, the last two days. Or, well, not the last two days. Uh. They was talking about it for like two days straight or whatever, and uh, he definitely uh, broke the internet and the memes and stuff. Oh my god, hilarious. But anyways, so Safari has the creep squad uh, still doing like this whole boot camp thing, and they're at the gym or whatever. DJ Self, he wasn't there because he bailed on them for whatever reason. Uh, Safari is telling them about the whole Paradise Remix situation, and, you know, he tells them that, you know, he didn't tell Yandy about it, and Jaque, like, come on, man, what is you doing here? You know what I'm saying? But Safari is like, well, I want to do a release party for the song, and, and this, that, and the third, and, you know, Jaque tells Safari, listen, I do want Cayenne to be on the remix or whatever, this, that, and the third, and Safari lets us know that Brie has been slacking, because, um, Safari wanted everybody to come in and do like their um own individual final uh touches um or whatever on the song and everything and Bree hasn't been doing her part or whatever she's been slacking so he might have to you know look to get somebody else to uh replace her so you know um Jaque tells them about how Cayenne, you know, he thought him and Cayenne was good, but then she brought Anais to, you know, uh, the video shoot just to, you know, uh, see if the stories matched up and how Anais is pretty much saying the same thing that he had been telling Cayenne this, that, and the third. And, you know, uh, how Cayenne, you know, started wilding on Anais and brought up the fact that, you know, she's supposed to be married and she's showing her vagina to everybody and whatever, whatever. So then we get, you know, Remy, Juju, and Yandy, they're playing catch up or whatever, um... Juju is telling them about how, you know, she's been hanging out with Safari a lot lately. And, you know, Yandy is like, oh, is that why you're glowing and whatnot or whatever? And, um... Remy is like, you know, Remy, she starts making faces. She's like, oh, hell to the no. And Juju is like, you know, what's the faces for? Like, you know, what's going on? And Remy is like, listen, I just want this relationship to stay platonic. I don't want it to go anywhere else. And, I mean, honestly, I kind of do agree with Remy. I know everybody else is kind of like, oh, my God, you know, uh, they should hook up. They should get together and everything. And I do agree. I definitely feel like um, Safari and Juju would definitely look good together. Together. they're both good looking people but i feel like safari is not on the level of juju uh you know mentally or whatever i still feel like he kind of has like a childish mind a little bit so i don't know if he could really you know hang with juju or whatever so i think i'm cool with them just you know keeping things uh platonic or whatever um as of right now so uh you know yandy she uh tells Juju, like, well, so since you're probably going to hear from Safari before I do, tell him, you know, I want, you know, um, I want to work on the record with him and everything and this, that, and the third. And, you know, she talks about, um, you know, the boy Alex or whatever um, that she's been working with and how she wants him to be on the record to give it like that international pop type of feel and everything. And Juju is like, well, listen, you talk to him because, you know, Juju, and I didn't talk about this scene last week, but I didn't care because, you know, I didn't care. But, um, last week, Juju and Safari, you guys know, they, uh, was doing like this pottery class or whatever and Safari was expressing himself about um you know Yandy trying to take over his song and everything and you know Juju was telling him well you need to talk to Yandy um Yandy about it and be honest and everything this that and the third so you know uh 
So when Yandy is talking to her, you know, Juju is like, well, girl, you just going to have to talk to him yourself because I ain't nobody's middleman. And I feel Juju on that. Y'all talk to each other, okay? <laughs> so then we have uh, Anais and Jonathan meeting at dinner and everything. It wasn't really too much with them. Um, you know, Jonathan, he has, you know, why Anais has been going through all of this with Ruben. Of course, because, you know, uh, Jonathan has created a friendship with Ruben as well, being friends with Anais for all these years. You know, uh, Jonathan has been kind of talk. He, he has been keeping in contact with Ruben on the low, and he somehow managed to get Ruben there um, to talk to Anais and everything. Anais, she's surprised because she didn't know Ruben was going to be there and, every, and everything. So Jonathan, he gets up to leave, and... Anais and Ruben, they start to have a conversation. She, you know, apologizes for her actions, whatever, whatever. And then they make up, whatever. I didn't really care. <laughs> so then we have, uh, like, Mariah. She's performing some song or whatever at, um, at the club. And, you know, Self is saying how he's proud of her for, you know, squashing Beef with Brie. And, you know, getting on the Paradise remix or whatever. Uh, Yandy, Jaque, and Cayenne, they're also there to support uh, Cayenne and Mariah. They have, like, a little conversation um, aside from everybody else. Uh, Mariah, she finds out that Cayenne is on the Paradise remix or whatever, and you know Mariah's like, you know, but wait a minute, uh, what about Bree? You know, you know what I'm saying? Ain't she supposed to be on the record and stuff? And Cayenne is like, I mean, it's whatever. Like, I really don't care because it's for a good cause. So Jaque, he comes and kind of in interrupts the conversation, and you know that's that. Then we get Juju and uh, Safari and Yandy. They're you know uh. They're rehearsing for, um, you know, Juju's play and everything. And um, so, for, like I said, uh, Safari and Yandy, they're there. And, you know, uh, Bianca was supposed to be there as well. And um, Bianca, she uh, texts Yandy and, and she's saying, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it or whatever. And Safari is like, oh, well, I'm not surprised and everything. And Juju, she she's upset. Because, you know, she feels like Bianca should have text, texted her and not Yandy. And I do agree with that. I mean, despite the fact that y'all all in this circle or whatever, this is Juju's play. The professional thing to do would have been for Bianca to text Juju and let her know what was going on. And, you know, Juju, she also feels the type of way because of the simple fact that we know Juju has been the one who has been the, um, who's been kind of, you know, the cheerleader for Bianca all this season, despite the fact that everybody else was telling her, nah, don't rock with her like that for real. You know, Juju is the only one that's really had Bianca's back. And for her to just kind of spit in her face like that, I mean, I felt Juju on that. I would have felt some type of way too. And it's just, like I said, Bianca, girl, <laughs> you gonna burn your bridge just with a lot of people with this uh bullshit that you be pulling but um anyway so juju was like fuck it i'm gonna just do bianca's part or whatever and I, um bianca was like the leading lady of the play or whatever and um so juju doing you know bianca's part i guess it was a part where bianca safari was going to end up you know kissing but since juju had to take over bianca's part you know uh they was about to do the kiss, and that's when, you know, I think Juju's sister was, was like, you know, cut, or whatever, you know, she yelled out cut right before, you know, they actually kissed and everything, and Safari was actually, you know, trying to kiss Juju or whatever, and Juju pulled away like, hold on, Holmes, cut, cut, okay, like, we ain't about to be, you know, kissing for real, or whatever, and, you know, Safari, he tried, but, hey, you know, but, um, anyway, so, um, Juju, go, she goes off somewhere, and Safari and Yandy, they have a conversation about the record. She, um, um, not Yandy, but Safari tells Yandy that, um, 
you know, I finished the record and everything. And she's like, how did you finish a record that I didn't approve or whatever? And Safari is like, I mean, yeah, it's not your song. <laughs> and Yandy is like, you know, we know it's not your song, but you know, you wanted all these artists to be a part of this remix and everything. And you was gassing it up and you was asking for my advice and for my opinion and this, that, and the third. And Safari is like, listen, I just feel like you were being bossy, like you were trying to take over and as they're having this conversation juju comes back and she's like you know what's going on here or whatever and safari is explaining to her you know what they were talking about and everything and yandy she gets in her bag she gets into her motherfucking feelings or whatever and she gets up to pick up her stuff and leave and sitting up here talking about the record calling it a whack-ass record and i'm like now, Yanni, that, that's kind of fucked up, especially because of the fact that, you know, Safari is doing this record for charity and he's giving all the proceeds to, you know, the people of St. Martin or whatever. And, yeah, I just felt like that was kind of, you know, that was kind of whack for you to do. Sitting up here talking about some, it's a whack-ass record just because Safari didn't do what you wanted to do and have that... uh alex boy or whatever to be a part of the song because you think that having them having him up there would make it go international or whatever this that and the third i mean even if old boy was up there quite frankly i still don't feel like the record would have did much i mean like i you know i did tell y'all last week the record was hot and i still do feel that way but i don't feel like it's gonna be doing whether alex was on the song or not i feel like the record wouldn't have been doing numbers like outside of this show <laughs> like i'm just saying you know but um anyways so uh like i said yandy being in her feelings she walks out on juju and juju is like you really gonna sit up here and do that yandy like you know first bianca with her bullshit now you because you and your feelings about this situation with safari and you're supposed to be here for me um as far as this play is concerned and i felt I felt Juju on that. And it's like Yandy always sitting up here talking about professionalism or whatever. But she surely wasn't showing it right here with this situation. Especially walking out on one of her closest friends when y'all supposed to be rehearsing this play because you're mad at Safari. Like, but whatever. So we have Safari's, you know, single release party, I guess you could call it, um, for the, you know, Paradise remix. Anais, Ruben, and Jonathan. They all show up together and, you know, uh, you know, the creep squad, they there or whatever. And Rich, he's at the bar trying to get a drink. And at the same time, Ruben, he goes to the bar and gets a drink. And Ruben is telling, you know, Rich is no hard feelings or whatever. Him and Anais are working things out. And, you know, Rich is like, listen, I'm glad that, you know, I'm out of it or whatever. I mean, even though she tried to show my man's her vagina, I mean, hey, you know, uh, you know, that's what you want to deal with. That's on you. And Ruben is like, uh, say what now? You, uh, who she showed her vagina to or whatever. And so, you know, um... Anais and Jonathan, they looking from afar. So Anais is like, let me go over here and, you know, break this shit up. So, you know, uh, Ruben is asking her, like, you know, who's Jacque and everything. And Anais is calling Rich messy and all this other stuff. And it's just kind of like, I mean, Anais, girl, <sighs> you brought this situation on yourself. If you wasn't doing the shit that you was doing, we, you know, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. It wouldn't be nothing to worry about or whatever so like i said she's going off on rich and everything jonathan and ais and uh ruben they leave or whatever uh cayenne and mariah lynn they show up yandy shows up she's still kind of pissed off with safari because she didn't uh get her producer credit or whatever and uh in the midst of this conversation brie shows up and yandy is like you know uh did you like your verse on the record and everything and you you know um Bria's is like i mean you know you haven't heard it yet and yandy's like nah you know i haven't heard you know the record yet and everything and you know uh Bria's is like oh well he got it and everything you know Bria is just so stoked up or whatever uh safari he gets on the stage and everything and he invites yandy on the stage despite the fact that they've had their differences he invites her on the stage and you know he donates you know the five thousand dollars to you know charity and um 
he tells the people of the song to come on the stage. And, uh, you know, Brie, she didn't go on the stage. Like, she was still in the audience and everything. So, I was just kind of like, wait a minute. Because at this point, she's still thinking that she was supposed to be on the song. So, I'm like, well, was she just going to, you know, let them play her uh, verse as the song was playing? Or was she just planning on uh you know getting on the stage as soon as her verse came up you know what i mean so i was just kind of like <laughs> you know what i'm you know what i'm saying so uh once she realizes you know after cayenne does her verse on the stage and the song is over with breeze in the audience looking dumbfounded because she doesn't hear her voice up there and everything and um she sent up here, you know, like, you know, I could show Cayenne a thing or two about music. I'm like, no, you can't. Cayenne can spit. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, like, I haven't really heard none of Bree's, like, material outside of this show. So, I can't really say whether she could rap too or not. But, um, I've heard Cayenne's shit. And, yeah, Cayenne got the bars, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. So, you, you can't really show her nothing. But, you know, um... She goes to the bathroom pissed off or whatever because she can't believe that she got played like this and everything. And listen, I can understand how Brie feels or whatever because, yeah, it was kind of messed up that Safari didn't say anything to her. But at the same time, if you wasn't responding to Safari and Safari kept on telling you you needed to come to the studio to do your finishing touches on the song, you know, do your um verse individually for the final cut, then, I mean... Who fault is that? You know what I'm saying? So, she just handles the situation the wrong way. She goes on the stage and, you know, addresses Safari saying, I don't know what happened to my verse or whatever. And Safari, like, you know, he been asking Brie over and over again, you know, to, you know, do her verse or whatever, you know, um, to come individually by herself to do her verse again and everything. But she didn't do that. She ain't never get back at me or whatever. And, you know, Brie is like that. You know, she sit up here talking about some Jacque doing whole shit for his little bitch or whatever, but it's okay. And then that's when Cayenne and Brie start getting into it. Rich, he does understand Bree's position or whatever, but he feels like it's a time and a place for everything. And Jaquay is talking about how Cayenne keeps on acting crazy, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, but Bree started with her. Like, you sitting up here saying all this shit about her, like Bree didn't start the shit with her. She called her, uh, your little, uh, bitch or whatever. You know, like, come on now. She started with her. But anyways, um, so... Safari does admit that he should have let Brie know what was going on and everything. Brie gets kicked out or whatever, um, you know, because her and Cayenne was trying to go at it. Um, Rich is like, you know, listen, Brie made a lot of moves without me or whatever. You know, had she spoke to me, I probably could have fixed this situation or whatever, but she didn't. So it is what it is. I'm like, Rich, please, when do you ever fix some shit? But <laughs> anyways that was pretty much it y'all for the season finale like i said not really a lot um i mean you know that they had like their little closing final sayings or whatever i don't really care <laughs> but um uh, you know make sure you guys like comment and subscribe make sure you guys come back make sure you guys uh share and i'll see you guys in a little bit for love and hip-hop miami all right y'all i'll see y'all in a little bit